having a private life with Allah. What does it mean to have privacy between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Well, intentionally, it's that you are extra careful with Allah in your privacy than you are careful with what people see of you in society. And one of the things that we and I have as a habit as human beings is we only want people to see us on the best foot, in the best circumstances, in the best clothes, in the best attitudes. And of course, subhanAllah, that this is something that is even more prominent with our Instagram generation today. There's a curated feeling of how we seek for people to see our life. Nobody wants to be seen in the horror that is their uh, waking up and going to sleep. No one wants to see them at a moment of distraction when they're not ready to be viewed by the general public. But most people, may God forgive us, are uncaring of what it is that is observed and seen of them by the one who fashioned them, made them, created them, gave them the opportunity, the life and, and, the, and the health and the wealth that they share with impunity and withhold from other people. And therefore, your private life becomes one of the clear criterions of your sense of guidance and righteousness that you seek to curate between yourself and Allah. And I want you and I to kind of be deliberate when we think about our privacy. I'm not telling you that you should now have an audaciousness and say, well, I'm not going to hide my sin. I'm going to sin in front of anyone. Uh, you know, if I can't hide it from God, I might as well show it to everyone. Is that what you're trying to say? The answer is no. The answer is that as you care for what people see of you, at least have some regard with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have a sense of humility and purpose and determination to do better to just do better with my private life and your private life. And there will be always moments in our life where we have lapses. Now the ulama, they have this really simple formula. They say, Aslih ma baynaka wa bayna Allah. If you are able to fix your private life, your sirr with Allah, yaslih Allahu ala niyatak. Allah will assist you in your public sphere and domain. You know, many of us, we worry about what people think about us. But really, if we were to be careful with what Allah sees of us, Allah would suffice us and build with us in the character that would not bring us downtrodden and humiliation in front of the general masses. And therefore, when you kind of consider who are the people that we seek to impress the most, they're not usually people who live amongst us. And therefore, some of the people that you don't have the same concern with, you might be more concerned, for example, with what your friends think of you than what your dad and mom thinks of you. You might be more concerned with what your work mates think of you than what your husband or wife thinks of you, if it's applicable, right? We are more concerned with those who are outsiders than those who are intimate and embedded with us. Why? Because we've taken them with familiarity, which has bred within us contempt. We haven't thought that this is something that we should hold ourselves accountable to. And therefore, I want to reignite this conversation with myself and you to begin inwardly. What is your privacy with yourself? When it's you, yourself, me, myself and I, what are my thoughts? What are my inclinations? What is the waswasa of myself to myself? Not the waswasa of the shaitan, the whisperings of the shaitan. What is a nafsul amara? What is that sinful impulse in my soul? Remember, your soul is affected in three ways. One soul, may Allah protect us from this, is a nafsul amara, a soul that inclines, invites, craves sinfulness. Next is a soul, may Allah elevate it past this stage, which is a nafsul lawama, a soul that makes a mistake but blames itself, holds itself accountable. I could have done better. I could have done less from this sinfulness. And the third in the elevated state is a nafsul mutma'inna, a soul that has reached a place of serenity, contentment, tranquility with Allah. Allahumma ja'alna minha ya minhum ya Rabb. May Allah make us of them who have this elevated standing and soul between us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that very debased soul is the one you and I need to be careful of and the way to treat it, to elevate ourselves from being a soul that inclines to sinfulness, its only way of cure is to protect ourselves in our privacy from excessive sin. That you combat the times of your isolation from having the impulse to do what's wrong, from resisting the need of looking at what's haram, listening to what's haram, thinking of what's haram, indulging in that which is sinful, that you fill that gap with that which is pleasing to Allah. 
And how do you know that you're connected with Allah? Is that your private life between you and Allah is full of righteous rather than immoral condemnation and conduct. That what you view and what you hear and what you say and what you do has a greater measure of elevated spiritual status than not. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you and I a spiritual awakening. That in my heart and your heart, in our privacy, in what is endeared in, in here, that the taqwa that we seek and show in our private life is of greater worth and value and practice than what we seek to show and demonstrate in public, in our public portrayals of our obedience to Allah. How do I increase my privacy? Well, stand in prayer when other people are unaware. And that's why the night prayers, tahajjud prayers, qiyamul layl is a powerful way. Even if it's just two rak'ah, wake yourself up a little bit before fajr. Pray two rak'ah before you sleep in isha. Pray your isha maybe with your family or in the masjid. Then go home and pray just two rak'ah in the isolation of your room that nobody knows about it. That increases your private awareness and your connection with Allah. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim wa zid wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibina wa nabiyina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your brother Yahya Ibrahim. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.